in this video, we're going to review the mock exam for IGCSE physics. So let's start off with some waves. So I want to state the name of an electromagnetic wave used by in mobile phone or cell phone communication. Um, so this is something you just have to know. You should know that microwaves are used by um, phones, which is why um, when first phones first came out, people were concerned about um, their health using them because they were worried about microwaves frying their brain. State the speed at which all electromagnetic waves travel. Uh, this is again something you should know. So 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Okay, so we've got four sound waves on an oscilloscope and state the letter that shows a sound trace for a ringtone which would be a loud sound with a high pitch. So Loudness is measured using the amplitude, so we're looking for a large amplitude wave, so it's either P or Q. And high pitch means high frequency, or a lot of waves per second, so that's clearly P. So a quiet sound would have a small amplitude, a low pitch would have a small number of waves per second, so that's clearly S. Okay, so a student calculates the work done when she lifts her mobile throne through a vertical distance of 50 centimetres, the mobile phone weighs 0.9. So we've got the stages of the calculation, S select the three that we need to do the calculation. So first we need the equation, work done is force times distance. But if we're putting an equation, our distance would need to be in its standard unit of in metres, which is why it's the one on the right that we need. We need the distance in metres, which then gives us this value once we calculate it. Okay, so we've got a speed versus time graph for the journey of a bus along a road for 80 seconds. Calculate the distance travelled by the bus in 80 seconds. So, um, first of all, the thing you need to know is the distance travelled is the area under the graph. So this is the area that we want. And then what I've done is I've divided it up into a triangle, a rectangle, and a trapezium. So those are the three shapes you can see there. So we've got 0.5 times 40 times 8 for the triangle area, 30 times 8 for the rectangle area, and half times 7 plus 8 times by 10 for the area of the trapezium, giving us a total distance of 475. So the mass of the bus is 8,000 kilograms. Calculate the maximum kinetic energy of the bus. And so the formula we need for kinetic energy is half mv squared. So we have to get the velocity from the graph. Um, so the maximum velocity was 8. So we're going to do half times 8,000 times 8 squared, giving us 2.6 times 10 to the 5 joules. So the bus has four wheels. Each wheel has a tyre inflated with air. After a long journey, the tyres are hot and the air pressure in the tyres has increased. Describe how the air molecules in a tyre exert a pressure on the wall of the tyre. So this is about your understanding of gases. So the first thing is the reason is a force is because the molecules collide with the wall. And we know there's a force because the molecules change direction. So the wall has exerted a force on the molecules, therefore the molecules have exerted a force on the wall. That's actually using Newton's third law. Explain in terms of molecules why the pressure of the air in tyres increases when the temperature increases. So at higher temperatures, the molecules of gas are moving faster. So then there's two ways you can kind of explain why that gives a bigger force. You can think of the fact that the collisions are higher energy, and you can think about if they're traveling faster, there'll be more collisions per second, giving a larger force on the wall. So there are a few different points you can make there, but these are essentially your options. So we've got some water being heated in a saucepan. Uh, we've got the weight of the saucepan and the water is 25 newtons. The area is 30 centimeters squared. Calculate the area in meters squared. So the thing you should know is one meter is 100 centimeters. So one meter squared would be 100 squared centimeters squared, which is 10,000. So essentially what we're going to do is we're going to divide 300 by 10,000 to give us 0 0.03 meters squared. Okay. 
So calculate the pressure exerted by the saucepan in pascals, showing the formula you're using. So the formula you need to know, pressure is force divided by area. Uh, so we've been given the force. We've now worked out what the area is in meters squared, so we can calculate the pressure in pascals fairly easily. Okay, so we've got a graph of temperature of the water over a thousand seconds. Uh, we've got the mass of the water, we've got the specific heat capacity of the water, calculate the energy required to heat the water to 100 degrees. So first off, the formula we're using, uh, that would be Q equals MC delta T. Uh, so the thing to work out is that the temperature change is 80 degrees, because it's going from 20 to 100. We've got the mass, we've got the specific heat capacity, therefore we can calculate the thermal energy supplied. So before the water boils, some of the water evaporates. State two ways in which boiling differs from evaporation. Uh, so there are quite a few, so I'll give you all of them so you can see what they would be. So evaporation can occur at any temperature. So like sweating would be an example of evaporation. You don't have to be at 100 degrees to sweat. Whereas boiling occurs specifically at the boiling point. So water boils at 100 degrees centigrade only. Um, so evaporation only happens to molecules on the surface, whereas boiling can occur to any of the molecules in the liquid. Um, you, to boil something, you have to input thermal energy or heat it. But evaporation uses the energy that's inside the liquid already to give the molecules enough kinetic energy. And Evaporation has the effect of decreasing the temperature of the liquid, which is why sweating cools us down. Boiling doesn't because you've put in energy to change the state of the liquid. Okay, so the fourth and final longer answer question before some multiple choice. So a snowboarder is exposed to infrared and ultraviolet radiation, uh, which are both parts of the electromagnetic spectrum. Put infrared and ultraviolet in their correct positions. Uh, so ultraviolet is higher frequency than the visible or the violet end. Infrared is at the red lower frequency end of the spectrum. State the speed at which the ultraviolet waves would travel in kilometers per second, giving your reason. So in kilometers per second, it's three times 10 to the five because there's a thousand meters in a kilometer. And the reason we know that is because they're all electromagnetic waves, which all travel at three times 10 to the eight in a vacuum. Okay, so now for some multiple choice questions. So we've got a rectang solid rectangular block made of density of two grams per centimeter cubed. What is the mass? So first of all, we have to work out what the volume of the cube is. We can then multiply that by the density to give us our mass in grams, because density was in grams per centimeter cubed. So that's 24 grams. So we've got a worker carrying bricks up a ladder. Uh, the following quantities are known, the height that they are lifted, the time it takes, the volume of the bricks, the weight of the bricks. Which of these were needed to calculate the useful power when he's carrying the bricks up the ladder? So uh, first of all, you could calculate the energy required using the mass times gravity times height. And to turn energy into power, we would divide it by the time. So mg is the weight force. So you can see we need the weight force, the height, and the time, which is option B. <laughs> Which statement about gas molecules is not correct? So this is like something we've seen earlier. So increasing the temperature decreases the pressure of the gas. That's not true. Increasing temperature increases pressure of a gas. But let's check the others anyway. Increasing the temperature makes molecules move faster. That is true. Molecules of gas are in constant random motion. That is true. Pressure of a gas is caused by the collision of molecules of the container. Again, that's true. So we know it's A. So which two processes require an input of energy, or so both require an input of energy? So boiling does, but condensation requires the removal of energy. Uh, again, boiling does, and melting also requires you to put energy in. Condensation, you need to remove energy. Solidification, again, you need to remove energy. 
Uh, melting does require input of energy, but solidification you have to take out energy. So we can see that B is the only one where they are both requiring an input of energy. So we've got double glazing with two panes of glass separated by a vacuum. Which methods of energy transfer are prevented by the vacuum? So both conduction and convection need particles to carry energy. Radiation doesn't. So radiation is not affected by there being a vacuum, but conduction and convection are. So that would make A the correct answer. These two would be stopped. Um, conduction would be stopped, but radiation wouldn't. Convection, again, would be stopped, radiation wouldn't, and conduction and convection would both be stopped, but radiation wouldn't. So we can see that A is correct. So we've got two diagrams representing a ray of light being reflected by a plane mirror. Which diagram shows possible values for the two angles? So what you should know is the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection, and those are both measured to the normal. So that's why it's option B, because you can see the angle between the normal and the incident ray would have to be 40 degrees, because they have to add up to nine, that plus 50 would have to add up to 90 degrees. But a loudspeaker on a boat produces a pulse of sound in the sea. The pulse is reflected back to the boat by the seabed. The echo of the pulse is received back from the boat three seconds after it is produced. The depth of the sea under the boat is 2,250 metres. From this information, what is the speed of sound in the water? So what we have to do is work out the total distance travelled by the sound and then divide that by the time. So because it's gone down and back up again, we know it's travelled double the depth or 2 times 2,250. And if the speed is constant, we can use speed equals distance over time and then get its 1500 or 1 1.5 times 10 to the three, which is option C. A car moves with constant speed of 15 meters per second on a road for 20 seconds. After this, the car is 100 meters from where it started, measured in a straight line. Which of these statements is correct? So let's first do some calculations. So if the speed is constant, over 20 seconds, it should travel three, a total distance of 300 meters. Um, so we can already rule out option C, because if its direction was constant, it would have traveled 300, not, it wouldn't be only 100 meters away. And we can also then put in option D, we can see it has traveled a total distance of 300 meters. But let's check the other two. Uh, we know A is wrong because we've calculated it's 300 and we know velocity cannot have been constant because it must have changed direction at some point to only be 100 meters away. So a load is applied to a spring. The load is gradually increased from zero until the limit of the proportionality of the spring is passed. And I've drawn you a diagram so you can see what this looks like on the graph. What must happen as soon as the limit of proportionality is passed? So uh, let's have a look. We want this one. So essentially what's happened is it stopped obeying Hooke's law because Hooke's law relies on it being a straight line graph. So when you've gone past the limit of proportionality, it stops being a straight line graph. So it stopped obeying Hooke's law. But we, again, we can go through. Um, the extension becomes equal to the original length. No, that's, that would mean you effectively doubled the length of the wire. That's not true. Extension stops increasing. You can see from the graph that's not true. And the spring breaks. Again, that's not true. That doesn't happen for a while afterwards. So water in a beaker is heated in a laboratory. Which statement about boiling when evaporation of the water is correct? Um, so we've seen this earlier. So a, we know is not true because evaporation occurs at any temperature, boiling occurs at one temperature. Boiling can occur at any part of a liquid, not just on the surface, that's evaporation. Evaporation can happen at a range of temperatures. So that leaves us with D. So evaporation only occurs on the surface, that is true. So which statement describes why convection is the main method of heat transfer in liquids? So the reason hot fluids rise is because their density decreases. So you can see option A fits that statement. 
but heating something has no effect on its thermal capacity so we can get rid of a, b and d and heating it de it decreases density so c is wrong okay so fine looking at a lens so we've got we can see going in we've got a parallel ray being reflected through R, so that tells us that the distance QR is the focal length, it's the distance where a parallel light ray is reflected. And then finally, a water wave travels at a steady speed of four meters per second and passes a stationary boat. Four wave crests pass the boat in every two seconds. What is the wavelength? So first of all, you can figure out what the frequency is. So if we get four crests in two seconds, that must mean the frequency is 2 hertz. So you're going to get two wave crests in one second. So what is the wavelength? Well, we can use the wave equation. We've got the frequency. We've got the speed. We can get what the wavelength is.